Hey guys, Nisar here from Data Mites. So today's interview question is that what is moving average in time series analysis? So basically moving average is uh, one of the statistical modeling by which we model any time series data. So this is one of the statistical modeling as well. So what exactly is moving average? What exactly we understand when we say that moving average? Okay, let's see. So for that, I'll just quickly do one thing. I'll just uh, get one data set. So I'll say import Seaborn at SNS because it contains lots of good data set. And uh, I'll be taking one of the famous data set that is flight data set from Seaborn. Okay. Like this. And I'll just store it in my PDF. Let me have a look. Okay, so uh, this is my uh, flight data set. Let me have a info of it so that I can understand what exactly category of data type is. So we can see that, you know, uh, though we have year and month, which is basically uh, time type data, but it's not yet being defined as time type data, it's still in integer and category as such. So uh, we need to do something and we need to convert this into a, you know, or time data type first, and then we will put this thing as an index position of my data frame. Because whenever we make something as a time series, it's a mandate that you know it's better to put uh, your time in the index position, row index position. So let's let's do it. So this one is integer and this one is category. So we need to merge these things together. But before that, I need to convert this into an object type first, that is a string type. So I'll say df of your year is equals to df of year uh, dot as type string. I'm just doing it in order to merge these two columns together. So I'll say month equals to df of month dot as type str so basically i just converted both into the object type data type and now i can simply merge these things to together so i'll just create a new column call it to be date and simply i'll just uh, merge these two things together here plus month right now as this thing has been merged uh, we don't require this year and month column as such in our space. So I'll just simply say df dot drop. Let me just increase the font size. And then I'll simply take my year and uh, I'll take my month. And simply I'll just uh, say access equals to one with making sense that it's a column and in place equals to two that reflect back into the main data frame. And now when we have dropped my year and month column, all I require to say to my system. Okay, so before that, I require to convert this into a date time data type. So how do we do this? So I'll simply say df.date dot, uh, or simply I can do in this way because let me just run it and let me show you how does it look like. So we have a date which is having uh, uh, the year starting with the the all format and the num numeric format, and we have the month that is just attached to it with, uh, you know, in 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 the literal form. So we 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 have to change this into the real real date time. So how do we do it? So I'll say df date equals to pd dot two. I have not imported my pandas, so I'll import my pandas over here as well import pandas as pd so i can say to date time and uh, over here i have to put my date like this and then i'll say the format the format because i have to specify what exactly the format of this particular date column is so the very first element is the date year itself so i'll say capital y which stands for the year in all the four digits. And then if you have a month, which is in this three uh, string type of thing, like Jan, Feb, March, you need to say percent B. So it understands that the first thing is your 
year and the second thing is your month but this time it is in a literal sense so simply run it and now you can check you can see your uh, data frame has your date column has got changed into a date date kind of uh, date type of data type so now all i need to put this into my index position to make it uh, proper for my uh, date time analysis thing right so i'll say df dot set underscore index and simply i'll put my date and I'll say in place so true now let me have a look up the df now it goes so i have just merged so this is the data for month wise of the passengers of the particular airline as such and you can see that for every first day of every month we are getting a data so what exactly is moving average in this so basically if you talk about a moving average as such if you talk about the moving average as such so basically let's say i have some data 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so uh, there are quite a moving averages one is being called as simple moving average or sma simple moving average okay so when we call about the simple moving average all we require is to put some window size to it some window size to it and that window gets rolled down rolled down like this so i'll just explain let's say just for an example we have put the window of one okay we have put the window of one so what will happen that first this value is going to be none because you know we don't have anything as such at the very top to roll down but the moment i go into the second element this second element combines with the first element and then the average happens so if i say about this this becomes 2 plus 1 divided by 2 so it's like 3 by 2 that is 1.5 now we move downwards the moment we move downwards these two gets added up and then the mean is being calculated so again 3 plus 2 divided by 2 that is equals to 5 by 2 that equals to 2.5 and then again we roll down once more so it's like 3 4 3 plus 4 is divided by 2 that is 7 by 2 that is 3.5 as such so this is being called as simple moving average so we take a window and we start to slide down and we are simply taking the average of the value and we are putting it so it's being called as simple moving average okay when we talk about there is one more kind of moving average it's being called as cumulative moving average or cma okay so when we talk about cumulative moving average so in this what happens let's say i have data like this uh, let's say this one is 12 13 11 15 like that okay so what happens when we roll down when we roll down the average gets accumulated it's not like that previous data are not getting included no it's cumulative means the previous things are also getting added up so basically if you talk about the first position nothing happens to it so it remains same uh, then if we come down these two things gets added up so it's simply 12 plus 13 divided by 2 uh, that equals to 12.5 right now when we move down it's not like the the window just moves down but it takes everything which is there from the starting so it's 12 plus 13 plus 11 so it's 12 plus 13 plus 11 and then we have to divide it by 
three because three elements have been selected and that equals to 12. Okay. And similarly, when we come to the next, this entire thing, because this is cumulative in nature. So this thing, 12 plus 30 plus 11 plus 15. 12 plus 13 plus 11 plus 15 divided by 4. And that equals to 12.75. So this is cumulative moving average. So these are the averages that is being basically being used for uh, you know, uh, making a moving average model than such. There is one more moving average. It's been called as exponential moving average, okay? Or simply we call it to be EMA. So what happens that the more we are getting the data, the overall mean is getting affected by the, you know, the, 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 the recent data means, uh, you know, it's a moving average, no doubt about it, but its effect, it's exponential. So what is, what does it mean by the, the newest data that is coming into your data set, it's having the more effect on the overall average of the system. So if you talk about the formula of your exponential moving average as such, so it's basically, let's say your current data, say current data and the EMA of the current data is dependent on the EMA of the previous data. As well. So it's, it's a bit tricky, I know, but this is how it is. So the formula is current data minus your previous EMA multiplied by, there's something called as multiplier. Okay. Multiplier. And then plus previous EMA, previous exponential moving average. So this is the formula of your current exponential moving average. I, as I said that, you know, the, the, the current data has the more, much more effect on the overall, overall moving average. The reason is the current EMA is being calculated on the basis of previous EMA. So the more the data set, the more data points are coming, the more you are enhancing towards the time, the more is the effect of that particular data point in its overall mean. So we have this multiplier. This multiplier is nothing but if you talk about this multiplier, multiplier, this multiplier is nothing but two times, two times. We have certain, certain rolling window size, right? We have certain rolling window size plus one. So we need to provide what is the rolling window size. And on top of that, it will give you the EMA value as such. And uh, when we talk about the practical imp implementation of this, I can, I'll just make you see that, you know, uh, you can put the multiplier or you can put the rolling window size in order to get your uh, EMA of the subsequent data points. So let's see how do we do it in Python. I mean, over here. So if we talk about simple moving average, it's, it's very simple. All you require is to take your data frame and say how much window size or how much rolling size, rolling window you require to take. So if I say df dot rolling three, it means that I'm taking the window size of three. It is going to get rolled down, like on the window span of three. And simply you say mean. So what will happen? That uh, the first two will become a NAND value because anyways, you, you can't take this. And these first three are getting added up. And whatever the mean is, this one is the mean of the first three elements. Now, if you talk about this, this one is the mean of the second, third and fourth element. And so on. So this was like a simple moving average. Let me just give simple moving average. Now, if we talk about the cumulative moving average that I just gave the uh, theoretical part of it. So cumulative moving average is 
done like df dot expanding. So we say that to be expanding it means you have to expand your rolling window size. And then simply you say dot mean. So what will happen? The first element will remain the same. The moment it's expanding, these two are getting added up and the mean is being calculated and it is being placed over here. Then if you talk about this, this is nothing but the mean of this, this, and this. If you talk about this, this is the mean of this, 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 and this. So it's expanding and it's taking up the mean and splitting up the value that's being called as cumulative moving average. And if you talk about the exponential moving average, it's also very simple. All you require to say df dot e w m, and you need to say how much span you require to have at that point of time because the span is nothing but your, you know, I, I, I told you that that's um, that's what defining your rolling window size as such. So when you say span equals to something your multiplier gets calculated. And on top of multiplier, your exponential moving average is calculated. So if I say, let's say span of two, that's nothing but your rolling window size. Run it. Sorry, I need to take the mean out of it. Then you can see with the help of your multiplier, your exponential moving average has been calculated and you are getting your exponential moving average over here like this. So this is what a moving average was in time series analysis. Okay, thank you.